Okay, so here we're going to look at um, rigid body equilibrium in two dimensions, okay? And the problems will start the exact same way with a uh, free body diagram, okay? So we have talked about a few things on a free body diagram. And the first and probably most important thing that, that'll show up in two dimension rigid body is uh, these things called support reactions. And this is how the um, body interacts with the surroundings, okay? And in general, if you follow one simple rule, you'll be able to include these support reactions on your free body diagram without any trouble. Okay, and that is that if it, if the support restricts translation or rotation, then there has to be either a force or a couple moment exerted in that direction. Okay, so it's easiest to kind of go through kind of three typical supports that we see. The first would be a roller. So your body just kind of sits on a roller like this. So if I ignore what's going on on the other side of the of the the body and just look at at the the support here, okay? This is free to move horizontally, okay? It is restricted from moving vertically. Therefore, there's a support reaction in the vertical direction. F acting straight up, okay, perpendicular to uh, the surface that uh, is resting against the roller. Okay, so again, it's free to move horizontally, restricted to move vertically. So uh, there's a vertical force. And again, if you draw it up and it's actually down, you'll just get a negative answer, just like previously if you assume incorrectly. Another common one is a pin joint. Again, uh, ignoring what's going on on the rest of the body. Okay, this pin right here, okay, will not allow me to move either horizontally or vertically. Okay, it does allow for rotation. Okay, so rotation is fine, but translation is restricted both in the horizontal and vertical direction. Therefore, there's no uh, reaction moment, there's no couple moment, but there is a Y component and an X component of the force because motion is restricted both horizontally and vertically. A fixed or cantilevered support shown here, okay, if I think about this guy, I can't pull it out of the wall, I can't move this end up and down, okay, nor am I free to rotate about this fixed point that it's clamped in there and won't allow to rotate. Therefore, since it restricts both horizontal and vertical motion, there's a force in the vertical and horizontal, F, Y, and Fx. And there's a moment occurring, okay, because it restricts rotation. So there's a moment over there. And again, if you make a wrong assumption about the sense, say you draw this up, and it's actually supposed to be down, all that's going to happen is you're going to get a negative answer when you solve for that force, and you can you can make the changes then. Okay, so just remember, if motion is restricted, there has to be a support uh, there restricting that motion. Okay, another thing to think about when drawing free body diagrams is this idea of internal forces, because I've got a rigid body, so I might have particles that, or different cables or things internal to the system. Okay. Now, Newton's third law tells us that those forces always have an equal and opposite pair, right? Every force has an equal and opposite force acting on it. Therefore, if I include it in my sum of the moments, they're going to cancel. So I don't need to include any of the internal forces in a free body diagram. Really, all I'm looking at is external forces. Okay, so any forces that are internal to the system, there's always going to be an opposite force also internal to the system that will cancel it out when I sum my forces. So I'm only looking at external forces. So support reactions, uh, gravity, um, some sort of active force, me pushing on it or, or what have you. Okay. Speaking of gravity, weight is an external force. Okay. Now with a rigid body, okay, uh, it we, we represent it as acting at a single point which is the center of gravity. And we'll talk about the center of gravity later on. It requires a little bit of calculus, so we're going to push it off a little bit on to the end of the semester. Okay, So it'll either state where the center of gravity is, where gravity is acting, or if otherwise, you should just assume it's at the center. So if it's a, if it's a long rod, it's right at the center of the rod. If it's like a square plate or a circle, it's right at the center, Okay, unless it states otherwise. That's what we assume. 
Okay, and we'll talk more about center of gravity uh, it, it, later on in the semester. Okay, so now that we've got our free body diagram, we apply our equilibrium equations. And with a rigid body, we not only have the sum of the forces in the x and the y, just like we did with the particle, but we also have the moments. And there is no rotation, okay? And with no rotation, the sum of the moments also equals zero, just like the sum of the forces in the x and the y. So I have three equations when I have 2D rigid body going on here. Now, that moment equation, the nice thing is you can choose any point for your, to take the moment about, right? And that point is important because when you're summing the moments of forces, you need to know where that force is, okay? Now, choosing that point can help you solve the problem very good. And it's best to choose a point that has the most unknown forces passing through it. That way, those points have zero moment about that point and don't show up in the equation. And it reduces the number of unknowns in your moment equation making it easier to solve algebraically. So again, choose a point. You can choose any point you want. You're never going to be wrong. But if you choose it correctly, you can make the math a lot easier and you choose a point with the most unknowns passing through it. Another thing is remember to include both couple moments uh, and moments due to forces in that moment equation. And remember, couple moments, the location doesn't matter. It's a free vector. So I just add it in there, um, not worrying about where the location of it is. Okay, force, moments due to forces, it, it very much does matter its location. So you'll take an R cross F of that. Okay, um, one last thing uh, is the idea of two force members. Okay, and it, it can be very helpful in solving the problems if you recognize when you have a two force member. And that doesn't necessarily mean that there's only two forces. What it means is that forces are only at two points. So in this example, uh, I have force at A and a force at B. Now, in order to satisfy these equilibrium equations, these forces have to be equal and opposite. That is what um, sets some of the forces in the X and the Y's equal to another. So they have to basically cancel each other out. And they have to be collinear. That way, my sum of the moments will be equal. And this is very helpful because if you have a two-force member, then you basically know the direction of the force uh, of each of those forces at the endpoints that the forces are acting on. So that can be helpful in, in dealing with these rigid body 2D problems.